Okay, I'm Grandmaster Herbert Ware with Mount Tabor Grand Lodge, and I want to thank you for taking an opportunity to watch or listen to this video concerning les uh, lecture preparation. Mount Tabor Grand Lodge's goals and objectives are to cause in its members increase in wisdom, uh, growth in stature, growth in favor with God, growth in favor with men, and to equip members for good service and leadership in their homes, church, jobs, community, and the lodge. So what you're about to receive here are excerpts from our CUBE system of training, which is designed to bring every man into proper alignment with our creator, to elevate uh, the intellectual and moral levels of every man within uh, our craft or all that we come in contact with and to raise up leaders within our overall Masonic uh, organization. So uh, what should drive a good lecturer and the lodge? It should be testimonial progress by members applying lessons that are taught in the lodge meetings. It should be visual ex uh, evidence of applied disciplines in the lives of its members. It should be guiding men and women to into healthy relationships with God and man, and also assisting members in identifying and developing their God-given talents and gifts. And lastly, establishing and growing healthy lodges and chapters. So with that in mind, the, a good lecturer always want to teach the ritual with scriptural validation. And then teachers, uh, we should teach members to follow biblical principles for living, okay? Uh, in order to do that, they're going to need, of course, your ritual. You need a Bible. You need a dictionary. And you need a notebook to write down notes and revelations as they're given to you. Uh, you need to pray. Our members need to pray and study something in their degree daily because daily exposure is the key. And then while studying and praying, or even as they're going about their business, they need to make daily notes of thoughts and questions or revelations received for discussion in meetings. And lastly, actively look at their sphere of influence for those people who have the same desires as they do and talk to them. Focus in the conversations on ideas, principles, and forward movement not people, things, and places. Uh, so we want to elevate everyone. Now, we want to talk about the strategy of a lecture. A lecture is a widely used form of presentation. A lecture is an oral, oral presentation of information by a teacher. It's a method of relaying factual information, which includes principles, concepts, ideas, and it teaches about a, a given topic. The teacher does pretty much all the talking. So number one, the teacher has to choose their topic. Number two, they need to research in, our, in the ritual and the Holy Bible and the craft uh, and symbols book is a good reference for uh, topics. And then number three, they want to research supporting scriptures. Now, you can use the Blue Lodge Holy Bible Reference Guide available on Amazon.com to uh, research some of those scriptures. But you want to make sure your scriptures are correct, both in content and context, okay? And then the fourth thing is you want to prepare your opening dissertation. That's key. You see, there are three parts or three components to a lecture. You have the introduction, you have the body, and you have the conclusion. And they are designed to promote uh, su and support learning. So you want to write your lecture days before, which allows the Holy Spirit uh, time to provide additional revelations to you. You want to use bullet points during your presentation, not an entire written uh, form of your lecture. Bullet points will save you time. You want to have a clear structure that you're going to follow in your lecture. 
So with that in mind, we're going to talk about nine or ten things that you want to consider. Number one, you want to consider your purpose. The general purpose of your lecture is mostly uh, is is most likely to inform an audience about something they don't know about. So, uh, are you leading them or attempting to lead them to towards developing their own thoughts on a subject? And if so, throughout the research and development of your lecture content, you want to ask yourself. How are you serving your overall purpose? Because everything has a purpose. The second thing is you want to read diverse sources. So you don't want to develop. Do not develop your lecture from a single source. Diverse sourcing will give you a more comprehensive understanding of the subject matter, and it will reflect in your presentation and your lecture a more authoritative ethos to your audience. So it's good to present scholarly perspectives that even conflict with each other. This will demonstrate that you've been thorough in your research and your compilation of your lecture. The third thing you want to do is start with an outline. So you want to divide your content into major parts and points and then use them to set up subpoints. So you want to make sure that you start with an outline that will help you organize your thoughts and help you get started in writing the actual wording of the lecture. Now, you can write out the actual wording, but you want to review that time and time and time again so that you only you present your lecture from your bullet points, okay, major and sub. The next thing you have to do or that's important is to include an introduction and a conclusion. Introductions and conclusions are even more important than verbal lectures written and passed out to people because unlike paper, the audience won't likely be able to go back if they miss something. The introduction should prepare the audience for the most important part of your lecture, and the conclusion should restate those essential parts. So what I'm saying is we're looking at telling a person what we're going to say, saying what we, what we said we were going to say, and then telling them what we said. So I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, and then I'm going to tell you what I told you. Very simple. Number five, tailor the length of length to the amount of time that you have to speak. Consider ahead of time what you're going to cover and how much time you have to present during your lecture. Generally, it takes two minutes to recite one double space page, although this can vary depending upon how fast you talk, slow you talk, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you want to, 15 minutes is usually a good a lot of a good allotment of time for Masonic lectures. Okay? So you want to practice and you want to practice and you want to practice. You want to maintain eye contact during your lecture. The best way to do this is to pick three to four targets for eye contact in the audience ahead of time and you rotate between them. So and then, of course, you always want voice inflection. Number seven, you want to watch your tone and your pace. Uh, consider how quickly you're delivering the lecture. And then you want a variations in your tone for emphasis and for uh, some of your bullet points. So going too quickly can cause people not to understand, and going too slow will cause people to lose interest. You want to practice. Practice on your own. Get in front of a mirror. Time yourself with a clock or your cell phone. Re review any words that you are unsure about to prevent stumbling. Okay? Then what you want to do, number nine, is work. Uh, if you choose to have audience participation, you want to anticipate the questions 
the uh, ideas that might come out in from the audience. So you want, might want to give them a chance to express themselves. But you need to anticipate ahead of time what you're going to be hit with. <laughs> so you want to anticipate questions and confusion. Now, if you're doing a lecture in a meeting setting, in the lodge, you it's good to announce your subject and then give supporting scriptures that you're going to use to your senior warden, and then you give your dissertation. You, then you have your senior warden read the scriptures, and you can go around the lodge and allow brothers to give their interpretation and state examples for that scripture. Now, you have to be aware of both the content and the context of those scriptures in relation to your lecture topic. So after brothers have given their interpretation, you can summarize and give life lessons that will teach, further teach uh, what you're attempting to get across to your brethren, and it further explains the scriptures. So with all of this in mind, I hope that this helps you and aids you in putting together some real dynamite lectures. Of course, practice makes perfect. Uh, I like to say perfect practice makes perfect. So, again, take, take heed to these. Use these as hints and aids to prepare your lectures, and you should experience good success in talking to your brethren and aiding your craft in elevating their intellectual and moral levels. This is Grandmaster Herbert Ware. Thank you for your attention.